Um, <laughs> Very ironic. Speak, speaking of names, um, where did you get um, you know the the name and the and the logo? You know, backlash. What is is there something you're backlashing against, or what's the what's the uh, story behind that? Yeah, I mean, so the the brand story in general, it's really it was kind of born out of the idea that when I was just like getting into craft beer, you know, back eight years ago, I remember like walking down the craft beer aisle, and like as like a young professional like uh, I just didn't really feel like anything kind of spoke to me it's a lot's changed since then you get a lot of different brands and different feels but at that time it was like a lot of like old kind of historically based nautically based old brown dog beer whatever and I was just like kind of bored by it and uh, I found myself gravitating to brands like stone and brew dog and dogfish head just because they felt a little cooler to me I mean in the, in the beer obviously it was fantastic but I just kind of I, those beers spoke to me on like a different kind of cultural level, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's kind of a hard thing to nail down. But so backlash for me was the, the idea was to make something that the, the beer is fantastic and maybe feels a little bit younger. And um, the, the idea of the name backlash is really to kind of give a face or personality to the craft beer revolution. So it's the backlash against, you know, uh, big watered down yellow fizzy beer or whatever you want to call it. Um, cool. So that's, that's kind of the yeah. That's kind of the uh, the sentiment that we uh, we're trying to infuse into into every beer that we make. Just ex expanding on what Carl mentioned, I didn't. I don't know if you've uh, watched in the past or even uh, know it tonight. We have a a chat room of folks. We had about four or five people in the chat room tonight. Um, one of the guys in the chat room being uh, Darkside. I think let's see here. Um, he was asking. Have you ever had? You know, I mean, have you ever had problems with the logo of your uh, of your brass knuckles? Did was there any? Did you ever have any pro problem with that? Uh, like um, negative feedback, yeah, more so. Yeah, yeah, we've gotten some negative feedback on the brass knuckle thing. Um, more positive than negative, but I guess that's kind of what we signed up for. You know, we uh, we we understood that that would kind of be polarizing, and a lot of people would love it, and some people would hate it. So it's just something that we kind of just we just kind of have to take in stride at this point. Um, you know, I feel like any brand that kind of takes a, a sharp stance in one direction or another is is bound to do that to themselves. But you know, we we know who our kind we know who our core uh, customer is, and we know what our demographics are. So and we're fine with that because it makes a lot of people happy and a lot of people uh, relate to it. So. If someone doesn't get it, that's fine. I mean, I just don't want people to think that we're like all about like you know fighting or violence or anything because that's totally not what it's about. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, and it's it's not like you know you're you're punching people in the face at beer fest here. <laughs> you're, you're right, actually, oh wait, what? Uh, uh, Brian Greenhagen from <laughs> Brian, Brian almost punched me because I asked him for a blueberry beer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> That was a funny story, actually. It was at um, the uh, celebration of hops, the uh, the Spring Fest by Drink Craft Beer. He was, I guess, watch you um, had a conflict last minute and couldn't make it, so they put, you know, Brian was good enough to kind of come in last minute, and they put him at the watch you sit table. So I asked him for a blueberry beer, and he fake punched me in the stomach. I think we got one more question from the chat, and I think it's a pretty yeah. good one. Yeah, we have another we have another question from the chat room. It's, this one actually is from uh, Bruce. Bruce, Bruce asked, um, he mentioned on your website you have a section called What's in My Beer? Uh, yeah. uh, and he uh, <laughs> he saw that, I'm not sure if it's on your website or someplace else, but he saw that someone gave a bad review for having white things floating in it. Um, and it seems to be that it's more of a beer education issue rather than a problem with the beer itself. How yeah. often do you run into problems like that? That was kind of an isolated incident, um, and if for I just I'll, I'll paraphrase what that whole thing was about right now, just for anyone who didn't who sure. didn't read it. But I basically we have a QR code on all of our labels where you can scan it with a smartphone. And it brings you to like a mobile review site. There it is, and, and you can uh, you can basically select the beer that you're drinking and review it, and it gets emailed directly to Maggie and myself, and we read every single one of them. That's cool. And, uh, That's amazing. Yeah, and we, uh, you know, we try to like just if there's any common feedback, uh, we'll take that into account, obviously. Uh, and this one email came through, and it was really bizarre because they're like, "What is? What are these? What are these white things floating in my beer? I think that's wax, and that's not okay." And so I was just like, I don't know. I, at first, I kind of did my normal thing where I scoffed at it, and like I went on Twitter and made a joke about it. And then Maggie was like, "You know what? It's probably 
something worth addressing because maybe not everyone knows that your our beers are unfiltered and that sediment is encouraged and all that stuff. So uh, I kind of took a step back and, and wrote a blog post saying, you know, hey, it's okay for there to be sediment sediment in your beer where their Belgian beers are unfiltered, unpasteurized. We actually encourage you to roll the bottle on the side for a little bit because that's where all the flavor is coming from. And, you know, if a bottle has been sitting in a fridge for a little while, you'll get all that stuff will settle out. Our beer will be crystal clear, which it's, which it's not supposed to. And what will happen is, you know, it's about it's about two individual glasses. So you'll pour out one, it'll be crystal clear. And the second one you pour out will just be chunky and, you know, look like orange juice. So I'm assuming that's what happened. Uh, and I just figured, you know, we should write a post and kind of educate people on the fact that, you know, unfiltered beers are they're done that way by design, and it's actually encouraged for you to, to you know, to re reintegrate that that fallen out yeast. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's important too that it it kind of shows it's it's more it's more to your to your guys' hard work that that the labels are so intricate nowadays where you're not just putting you know you can redeem it in Mass, New Hampshire, Maine, whatever, and there's a label, and that's it. Uh, yourself and a lot of other brewers, I think even Pretty Things, you know, they, they have stories on theirs and, and things, so it, it's, it's kind of more, more help uh, in improving the drinking experience, which, I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's all bonus for you guys. And, and I think, honestly, that that's the first time I've heard of um, QR codes being used in a, in a forward direction, like a, you know, us giving feedback to you direction. Usually it's just mm -hmm. a link to another page that has, you know, the brewery's official description of the beer or maybe a, you know, press photo of it. But right. the fact I mean, that you have a way to input from that is actually a really cool model, and I think that um, a couple breweries could learn from that if they could stomach the feedback they would get. I feel like we and we got a pretty good amount of use out of it. Like I'll, I'll, we get you know a few emails a week, and sometimes even more than that. When we have a new release, so I feel like people just want to be known, be you know, be heard, and that's the benefit to it. You know, why I just feel like if you scan a QR code and it takes just it's like a page's Facebook, it's just going to feel used. You know, so yeah, <laughs> giving someone like the platform to be heard. And I hope people, you know, understand that that actually comes directly to me. We're a two-person company, so there's no one else that's going to read it aside from us too. Like it doesn't get filtered down through like any sort of marketing organization or anything. It just that's huge. Through. That's awesome. It goes directly to my phone. So, all yeah. right. So do it right now, Sean. Do it right now, because I mean, we're we're gonna catch him in this lie. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I, I think Sean's so in the middle. Sure. No, no, no. <laughs> Sean, Sean's scanning his phone. But I mean, while he does that. Um, I guess that kind of leads into another question about you know beer reviews and and uh, I've I've talked to many many different brewers both nano and micro around New Hampshire and they're they're some go to Beer Advocate a lot some go to Untapped a lot but at the end of the day they're more nervous to check these reviews than not. Do you find yourself uh, just brewing what you want to brew and and kind of just going on one path or, or are you really obsessing about the the beer advocates of the of the world and the rape beers and stuff? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I I would like to to say that I don't go on there um, because I'm just like that confident, and uh, but I do, you know. Sure. I, I feel like it's natural, like kind of, to want to solicit feedback and stuff. Uh, you know, for better or worse, sometimes you know Maggie's told me don't go on there and just like do what you want to do, but you know, in reality, it's just part of it's part of me that wants to like, you know, get get as much uh, you know real-time feedback as possible especially like with salute for instance that was like such a highly like you know Great highly beer. publicized and touted beer and you just we just wonder how you know how it's being received and you know you take it with a grain of salt because the beer advocate community is pretty refined and you know they all they're all kind of outspoken in their own way so um you know you try you try to come through and pick up the constructive stuff uh but you know i i, I do go in there once in a while um i don't i don't kill myself over it because I, I think we've kind of proven to ourselves and to our customers that we're not going to release a bad beer or anything that we deem to be bad. So anything that, anything that leaves Paper City Brewing and ends up on a shelf, uh, we've all tasted and we've agreed to. Um, so, you know, that's that's what ultimately means the most to us. Uh, yeah, so we, we try to really be swayed one way, not, one way or another by anything else. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a great point, and you, you brought up a, a a beer that I had a good chance. I tried on where the heck was it? Somewhere in Boston, a bar, obviously. Um, anyway, you, you you mentioned Salute, which um, was it was a great great beer. And would you mind giving us a quick story on on why on, on why you came out with that beer and, and kind of how that got to light? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Salute was our latest release. It was an American double IPA, our first American beer that we've done. Uh, like I said, we do mostly Belgian beers. Um, 
and yeah, the whole concept behind the beer, the backstory was that uh, last year Sam Adams did this thing called the Hop Sharing Program, um, and the idea is basically that as a larger brewery, whenever you contract hops out, you're legally obligated to buy that quantity, whether or not you're going to use them. So I think Sam Adams kind of found found themselves in a position where they're going to have some extra hops, um, you know, specifically like Simcoe and Citra, like really hard to get varieties for anyone at our scale. Uh, so they just offered to let local um, brewers in Massachusetts and uh, I think, I'm not sure if it was probably only Massachusetts, but um, basically they said you could buy them from us at our cost. There's a huge outpouring of requests for these hops, obviously, especially at the Sam Adams cost, which is really, really low compared to what, would be, what anyone else would pay. Uh, they had they had to hold they had to hold a raffle uh, because there were so many requests and we happened to win the raffle so we took these really hard to find sexy hops and we put them in a double IPA because we figured we just wanted to showcase them in all their glory just you know hop a beer up to absurd levels and just and, you know, and let it go and it, it was received really really well we we brewed it only twice um, hopefully we can find the hops to brew it again sometime but it was really just a test. The uh, test the response to like you know a good solid double IPA made locally and it was overwhelmingly good. It's awesome. I love the photo you guys pasted posted on Facebook of you guys delivering a bottle of Jim Cook to let him try the beer. That must have been kind of cool. That was awesome. Honestly, it was like it was like I feel like you know we we're kind of in this thing heads down like every day and you know you make progress and you kind of even realize it and then it takes like certain milestone moments and you're like holy crap we've come a long way. And that was one of those, I, you know, I, I kind of call them like the holy shit moments where you're like, oh, wow. like, like we had one when we went like, state, when we first went statewide, we're like, wow, our beer is going to be available in every corner of Massachusetts. That's, that's a holy shit moment. Um, and that was awesome. He, honestly, I was really nervous. Whoa. That, that was a uh, mic. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I farted. It, 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 I'm sorry. It should get a question in. Uh, <laughs> I was I, I was really nervous to meet him, and he's honestly he's the most down to earth, humble guy. Um, you know, we sat there, and I think we we talked for about an hour. We we sampled the beer out of different uh, shapes of of glassware, and just kind of just nerded out on beer for an hour. And it was so awesome because I can't even imagine what an hour of Jim wow. Cook's time is worth. To anyone else, yeah, you know, and, and he was really cool. He was like, "Hey, this is like I've been looking forward to this meeting because it was just legitimately it was just beer nerding. It wasn't." anyone trying to sell anything or looking for money. It was just, just for the love of beer. And it was really, really cool. That's awesome. Oh my God. Um, so, I mean, you, you mentioned that you had, uh, had a great time. Holy shit moment with Jim, but have there been any other kind of, uh, holy shit moments that, uh, that are in the making anything, anything coming up that you can kind of, uh, put a little, uh, little secret out yeah. there. Um, yeah, I think so. I think we could probably give you guys a little sneak peek. I mean, I've been meaning to, put a blog post out there for a long time um, about this, but we haven't got a chance because I've just been busy with the whole going to get married thing and all that. Congrats. Stuff. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, we can do it on the podcast. Norm can be your thing. Your, yeah, uh, be the justice your, of the peace. Justice of the peace. Is that, I'll ask Maggie right now and she'll, we'll see if that's okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to get married to Norm. Or, I mean, you know, signal. No, Elder. You're a nice guy and all, so. Nice. <laughs> he comes out a little strong, but once you get to know him, it's well, magic. Totally. Uh, He's a good hugger. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm an exceptional hugger. <laughs> oh. It's a craft. Uh, no, so one of our, one of our bigger... Hugger. Moving on from that topic as quickly as possible. Yes. Uh, <laughs> one of our uh, bigger pieces of news, I think, coming up is that we're going to be doing uh, a double IPA series uh, oh, nice. whereby we are going to take the grain bill that we use in Salute, so all the malt backbone will remain the same, and we're going to rotate through some pretty awesome new uh, varieties of hops. Uh, the mo most notably will be like Galaxy and uh, Mosaic and a couple other really kick-ass hops that we're able to kind of hoard over the past year. Um, is that draft only or is that also package? It's going to be draft and bottle. Uh, it's going to be geared heavily towards draft because we want it to be consumed quickly. Uh, and you know, you always run the risk with putting a lot of beer in the bottles that it ends up somewhere where it's going to sit there for a long time. Um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have as much control over that as you know as someone would like. Um, but you know, by putting it in the kegs heavily, you kind of guarantee that it'll be it'll be turned around pretty quickly. So, 
Chris What's your you. percentage of that you do now of uh, sales for a draft versus package? Um, we're we're at about a fifty fifty split, um, and a lot of that is kind of skewed. Like our apocalypse series, because we worked with a local artist for the uh, the label art, we wanted to make sure that we got a bunch of those bottles out, and that a lot of people um, were able to kind of appreciate the, the art because it's incredible. And um, you know, we didn't we we wanted to really to use that as a vehicle to promote her art uh, because she gave us. A really, you know, she did a really solid, really big solid by, you know, volunteering all our time and, and making really awesome designs. So, um, but you know, it's about fifty fifty right now. It it changes seasonally. You know, the summertime is always you see a higher, a, a larger amount of people going out and drinking at bars versus at home. So, kegs kind of, uh, you know, turn on then. I mean, it's a, a as as you sip. I gotta. I just opened up the famine, nice. and uh, I, I gotta tell you, I. Even in sending it, you know, next to all the bottles in there, easy to pick out because it's, I mean, just crazy. Like, you don't you don't see this on bottles at all anymore, or I mean, at all. If you saw the original, the original is about three times the size of the label. It's like it's yay oh, it's big. Cool. And the uh, the detail in the original is just incredible. Um, you know, unfortunately, you lose a lot when you shrink it down. But, um, you know, the style is just really unique, and it's, it's really kind of epic, and it feels like biblical in a way. <laughs> So That's it was an awesome match, and the girl, uh, one of our friends, she's from Jamaica Plain. Her name is Sophie Tuttle. SophieTuttle.com has a, just a really uh, an amazing, amazing portfolio of just inc incredible art. I just think it's breathtaking. So I'd encourage you guys to go out and check her out because she's uh, she's doing some really cool stuff. Don, I'll toss that right in the show notes for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I was just uh, wanted to ask about how important social media is to you guys because when you guys first started, still now, I still you're one of the best breweries I I know of on Twitter. I mean, you guys engage people all the time. You're by yourself, Maggie, and it's a backlash account. You guys are all over the place on Twitter and Facebook. How important was that for you guys when you first started to take advantage of? Uh, I mean, it was you guys get literally for advertising like uh, the big guys. So absolutely, it was literally everything, and it still is everything. I mean, aside from we like the, we don't do any advertising outside of social media. If you want to call that advertising, you know, like it's all about you know being a part of the conversation and connecting with as many people as we possibly can. Uh, you know, part, I guess, part of our success in social media is probably due to the fact that I like I live on my phone, which is probably not a good thing all the time. But Maggie just gave me a thumbs down from the other room. Uh, <laughs> I think we all live on our phone. <laughs> yeah, but so like, I've been I, playing I, words I, with friends all night. Yeah. <laughs> Norm's got one friend. Words with friend. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but it's you know honestly it's it's exciting to me. It's, I love talking to people about what they're drinking or just whatever, and you know, and it's important to us to do more than just kind of push out promotional nonsense via Twitter and Facebook. I was I want people to understand that you got a direct line of communication. I mean, like I'll shoot the breeze. I mean, Norm, you know, we we talk about just anything really on on Twitter. Like I remember, that. yeah, I remember one night we were going on ripping apart the bills with a a fellow. Yeah, exactly. So you know, like I. I, I sometimes worry that people are going to be like, "Why is Backlash talking about like football, man, nah, whatever?" But that's just kind of, I, I want to, I want it to be more of a fluid conversation. I don't want it to be just just beer and just, you know, be very like stale. So, do you think it helped when you first started? Because I mean, of all the, because you started in that big year where eight breweries started in Massachusetts at one time. Of all the breweries that started, I think you guys were getting the most attention. Everyone knew who, what what beers were coming out months ahead of time for you guys. Compared to like a lot of the other breweries, you guys just spent so much time. Do you think it gave you guys a, a little jump? Like, hey, I know these guys from Twitter. I'm gonna just give out the beer, just to give it a shot. Obviously, the beer has to be good to keep them coming back. But do you think it gave it a good shot for the first couple beers when they first came out? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, it's kind of crazy the amount of business connections we made through um, through Twitter. Like, we we met Suzanne and um, Kate and Suzanne from CBC Belmont through Twitter. So like they, they and honestly I'm not from Belmont. I don't go to Belmont often. I didn't. I hadn't really heard about CBC Belmont. And then like you know they hit us up on Twitter. Awesome people, obviously very active on social media as well. We went by the store. It was just like I mean it's it's amazing about you know how much word of mouth really happens on Twitter. So we got on there a few months ahead of time and started to you know get the awareness up and yeah like you said it was it was a lot. We were really. We had no idea what the effectiveness would be of it, but like our, our launch party, it was promoted 
just through Twitter had a, a pretty awesome attendance and I don't really... remember 